All right, folks, I have something very special for you today. This right here is the Elvis unit. This is the ambulance that carried Elvis away on the day he passed away, took him from Graceland to the hospital. This ambulance, by the time you see this, it's already being shown live at the Tiger Man Museum in Memphis. So go check it out. Billy Stallings, the spa guy, the man responsible for bringing this ambulance back into the public eye and putting it into the museum. And I got a chance to interview him as he was uh, as he was cleaning it up. So I hope you enjoy the video and uh, go check out Tiger Man Museum in Memphis. Oh, and wow. the guy, by the way, that that's, that bought it and saved it at the auction, if he hadn't have gotten it, it would have been crushed and lost forever. The other people that were bidding that day was one company, and that one company scrapped. Vehicles. They didn't. They didn't buy them to fix. They bought them to scrap. So at the auction, was it known that this was the unit? Yes. Yes. What happened was, he was. He's a Memphis City cop. A friend of his that was a fireman, that was that knew that this was happening, called him and said, "Hey, Elvis unit's coming through today. If you want it, you better get down here because the other people that are bidding are the people that are going to destroy it." And he went and bought it. That would have been 1991. Wow. Just a phone call here and there. Yeah. Well, it's the same way that, that we found it. You know, it was uh, Mac had had the defibrillator. You know, I did a story with Mac McQueen. He had the defib. Rinse that down. Let me hit it again. And he was telling his neighbor across the street that was a, I believe his, he told me his neighbor was a fireman. And he was telling the neighbor that was a fireman about the defib. And he said, I sure wish I knew where the ambulance was. And never said, I know where it's at. My buddy bought it. That's a policeman. So it was one of those kinds of things. So he went and saw it in these people's backyard before the guy had passed away, you know, before the guy that saved it, Terry, had passed away. And it was, they were storing car parts in the back of it. And uh, he had a picture of it. He showed me a picture of it that he, it's in the video that he had seen there. Um, and when he when he did the picture, um, he he was able to tell me kind of their last name. He didn't have quite right, but he told me the street that it was on. So what I did was got on Google and started searching that name, thing close to that name on that street. I found a house that I thought was the right house. Went and knocked on the door. The people said, "Yep, used to be here. That's my husband's. It was a lady. That's my husband's brother, and he's passed away." Um, but if we'll tell his widow, and at the time I didn't know her name, we'll tell her a, a, that you're interested in looking at it and we'll, and she'll give you a call. And so in my naive mind, I thought, well, heck, I'm getting a call today. Well, that day went by, not didn't get a call. Next day, next day, next day, nothing. So, and I never asked for their phone number or anything to call them. I would just make it a habit when I went to Memphis, which I went to Memphis a lot, you know, filming Elvis stuff. When I would go to Memphis, I would, um, I'd make it a point to stop by their house and knock on their door. And so I stopped by their house numerous times over years, knocked on the door, and they tell me the same thing. Well, she, um, you know, we've told her, it's up to her to talk to you. We're out of it, which I understand, you know, that's fair. And um, so I, I just kept going back. What We were there in 2018, Trey and I, my sidekick, we were there filming. I had a list of things to film. And I had decided, I didn't even put this on the list because I had been there so many times. I more or less, I hate to use the word give up, but I had just gone, okay, that's, that's clearly not going to happen. And in the meantime, I had gone to, um, they, every time I would knock on their door, they would give me another clue. They would say something else that would make me, that would get me closer to where it was at. And when I'm saying another clue, they would tell me, well, I, you know, she lives over in such and such neighborhood. So what I did was during the winter, I went over there during the summer, couldn't see anything. So I waited during the winter and went back and flew my drone with the trees down to see if I could see it in that neighborhood. I never did see it. 
So anyway, we were filming another story and we were two blocks from where this, from where the first house was. And I told Trey, I said, I don't have this even on the agenda, but we're here. We might as well go over there and knock on, at least knock on the door and say hello. So I went over there, knocked on the door with my business card, like I always did. I, I write my number on the, on the my spa guy, uh, hot tub, on my YouTuber card that I don't put my phone number on it, but I would write my phone number on it for them and go over there. So I went over there. It's actually cleaning up good. Yeah, that's looking really um, good. Really good, I went actually. over there and um, rung the doorbell, same thing, told her, I said, I know you were tired of seeing me. She said, she said, you know what? She said, you've come so many times, I had a stack of cards from you. And one day I saw those cards and I picked one up and I looked at that YouTube thing and I thought, well, what's this guy keep showing up here for? There's gotta be something. So she said, I sat down and opened YouTube up and I punched your thing in and pulled it up and started watching your videos. And I understand now what you're doing and what you're, why. And uh, here's her name, here's her address, here's her phone number. And boy, we hightailed it over there. <laughs> and I have a video on YouTube of that day, of us discovering that. And I had Trey with me, so he was able to film my reaction the first time I ever saw it. So you hightailed it over there, huh? I hightailed it just as quick as I could and when we got there now you don't know just because they gave me the information doesn't mean that lady's not going to kick me out of the yard you sure know? so I didn't know what her reaction would be and her, um she was very nice I, so when I got there the first thing I did was jumped out and zoomed in on it and filmed it so I had a record of it in case she ran me out of the yard then I uh uh, went and knocked on the front door and she came to the door. She was very nice, came out, talked to us, gave us permission to go back to it and film. And uh, then we had a conversation about, uh, I told her, this is the way I said it to her. I said, you know, this thing needs to be in a museum. And she said, yep, it does. And I said, so does that mean this is for sale? And she said, yep, it is. I said, okay, well, let's talk about that. And that's how all this came about. How could this end up in such a precarious spot? Well, I think because it is a, it's one of those things that you don't really want to talk about. Okay. But it, at the same time,